Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So the ISO 20022 standard, um, it's coming. It's coming soon. It's something that us in the XRP community have been waiting for for a very, very long time. Of course, we know this is going to basically be the backbone, the infrastructure that ushers in a new global financial system. And I know we've been hearing murmurings in the XRP community, people specifically associated with Ripple, detracting from this whole ISO 20022 standard saying, you know, it's not really too terribly important for XRP and this idea that we shouldn't really focus on it because it's really not something associated with any particular cryptocurrency. Well, I wanted to do this video for you guys because, um, you know, although that may be true, I do think there are some other points that we have to address. So I thought I'd revisit ISO 20022. I'm going to go over some former videos that I did back in 2019, 2020, 2021. We're going to talk about this. So it's all about harmonization, right? Over 70 countries have already adopted ISO 20022. So messages will be harmonized with payment systems around the world. There's also the resilience. They're obviously doing this to maintain the financial infrastructure, compliance and regulation. This is also going to be a big theme. Uh, flexibility, the ISO 20022 standard can adapt more easily than current messaging standards. So it's more responsive to changes in the economy, emerging technologies and innovation. Enriched data, you can get more information from it. Uh, completion and innovation, more flexibility means more completion and innovation. In the financial sector, better data may lead to better product innovation. Straight through processing, less need for banks to make manual interventions, potentially fewer delays for the end customer. So I think this is important, speedy, quick transactions. Uh, there's also analytics, enriched data that will improve analytics. More efficient data collecting may improve decision-making. So it sounds like uh, flexibility, resilience, a more robust infrastructure, all reasons why you want to improve the current financial financial system. I think this goes hand in hand with blockchain technology, DLT technology. So this is why the standard is coming. And so I wanted to bring you guys to a video I did back in 2019. If you guys don't remember, this was Lael Brainerd talking about the Fed Now project. This from the New York Times, Fed wants workers to get paid faster. So uh, this article kind of summarizes the things. Then I have the points that I thought were really important. So the Federal Reserve said on Monday that it will create a real-time payment system with the goal of making paychecks and money transfers available for use more immediately. This is for the people, folks. The move is aimed at narrowing the amount of time when money is deposited or transferred into an account and when it is available for use. The gap can span several hours or several days, putting individuals, particularly low-income Americans, at a disadvantage. Community groups, smaller banks, and advocates for low-wage earners have been calling for the Fed to limit the delay and to create a public sector option for real-time payments. But some in the banking industry, particularly large banks, have pushed back against the effort over concerns that the Fed's involvement will compete with their products and potentially crowd out private sector efforts. The round-the-clock service will be called Fed Now and is expected to become available in 2023 or 2024. So long, so long. And so I'm going to go over a few of these points here. Uh, I just took some notes uh, with regards to this. Lael Brainer on the faster payments. Some of the most important things that were discussed in this talk from Lael Brainer. The Fed Now service is to ensure safe, secure payments available to all banks, no matter what size. Do you guys remember back when Brad Garlinghouse was mentioning the fact that there are two types of banks, tier one banks and tier two banks, and how Ripple is setting out to democratize those large payments, the banking system. He said that RippleNet will be able to help provide those tier two banks to perform those cross-border transactions and to source liquidity through XRP without having to rely on the tier one banks and using their Nostro and Vostro accounts worldwide. Well, Lil Brainer is saying the same thing with Fed now. The service is to ensure secure payments available to all banks no matter what size uh, there is going to be an issue with liquidity so immediate access to funds so she says immediate access to funds she doesn't say sourcing liquidity immediately or maybe she does but I put it here as an example it struck me as something very very obvious sourcing liquidity immediately and there were four pillars that she talks about here number one equitable access to banks of all sizes nationwide along pr the private sector number two safety and faster payments number three increasing competition and neutral platform, i.e. a level playing field. She didn't say it straight out, but that's exactly what she's saying. Right now, there is not a level playing field for this competition, and what she is saying is that FedNow will create that level playing field. Number four, real-time settlement service to move innovation and payments forward. Now, this is all very important. A lot of us are wondering, 
Will they be using RippleNet? That's the big question. Will they be using XRP? Well, the discussion continues later in this video. Uh, just stay with me here, guys, for a second. Interbank settlement and clearing lags behind other countries that have implemented real-time settlement systems, so we know a lot of other countries around the world are already doing this kind of thing, and the United States has been lagging. So far, we have had to rely on legacy systems. She doesn't mention SWIFT, but that's exactly who she's talking about, and so they're modernizing the system. Consumers and banks around the country expect real-time payments 24-7, 365. Something that Ripple does, uh, the Federal Reserve will have to provide this vital support for everybody involved. Uh, but she keeps hitting that point home of meeting the needs and working with banks, large and small, to help them conduct business using faster payments and settlement services. Not only that, they do mention the fact that it is interoperable, making interoperability a high priority. And to me, this is the key. Even if FedNow does not use RippleNet, it will have to be able to plug into RippleNet because RippleNet will be such an influential piece of technology around the rest of the world. And we know the U.S. does not just conduct business within their borders. Okay, this is a global thing, guys. Uh, I saw this from Bank XRP on Twitter. The FedNow service will process and settle individual payments within seconds, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And that was from their report here. He uh, links a couple of PDFs. And guys, I always link all these articles and tweets in the description if you want to read further. Uh, a couple of things that we already went over. Some people here are wondering though, you know, is this going to be Ripple? Is it not going to be Ripple? And so the fact that they are releasing in 2023 to 2024 makes it sound like it is probably something that they are creating on their own. But, 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 but it will most definitely have to be interoperable with Ripple technology because there will be so much influence, in my opinion, with RippleNet products around the world. And uh, so some people are pointing out this uh, Paragraph down here, the private sector has taken some steps to address limitations, including through the development of private sector infrastructure to move funds between banks in real time. I uh, don't know if they are talking about Ripple there. The fact that they are releasing in 23-24 uh, makes it sound like this is a big, this is a long play for them. We all know that the Ripple, uh, that the technology exists today. They could tap into Ripple. Uh, they do have some concerns with a private entity having full control over this. Uh, nevertheless, I don't think this is a problem. Some people are yelling here you know this doesn't sound good for ripple some people are like oh well they'll just be using ripple you know there are lots of things happening here and we really just have to look at the bigger picture guys ripple does have a lot of great connections and we already know how many banks they are partnered with we already know what they will be doing they are obviously not going to transfer every single dollar from point a to point b across the entire globe until the end of time there will be other services there so i don't think that this is a threat to ripple whatsoever i think the good news is that the government is modernizing and the bigger thing i think you guys should be looking at is the fact of interoperability with ripple and the fact that they want to make that a priority because the world is changing you remember when bearable guy said this and whether you are a bearable guy fan or not it doesn't matter at this point ripple and xrp was that first splash in this space that is ultimately getting the ball rolling the snowball effect of what we're starting to see today day. Okay, Swift has now had to change their tune. The Federal Reserve is now changing their tune. Everybody around the world is realizing that money needs to be able to be sent across borders at the speed of light, and now everybody, Facebook, Libra is jumping on board. Everybody is switching gears and making this happen, and guys, that can only be good for the ecosystem, really good for Ripple, because Ripple is interoperable, and they have already planned for this. Okay, we got Stuart XRP here on Twitter as well. How will the Fed service work? And so he highlights this, the Fed now service will process and settle individual payments within seconds 24 hours a day seven days a week 365 days a year so what does that mean going at the speed of light how are they going to develop this so now you know could they be using ripple debt could they be at least licensing the technology but maybe they would have uh, a provision where they have full autonomy over certain aspects of it i don't know the ins and outs of that kind of stuff contracts and whatnot but it's an interesting point to think of. Uh, and then some people down here getting into the conversation as well. Crypto Jedi mentions, uh, based on this statement, it would seem that FedNow would have to be a service that allows other services like Ripple to plug into it. Uh, and I tend to agree with that comment. XRP Buddha makes a good point here. If you ask me, all countries are developing their own system which are compatible with ISO 20020. I think he means ISO 20022. Uh, and that is basically the interledger protocol. Look at the US 
the dates match what the Fed said today. And yes, he does indeed correct himself down here. Uh, if you look at this, we have the countries on the left side here and when they will be migrating to the ISO 20022 system. Uh, and then so October 2020 to 2021 chats, I think that's Hong Kong, the US Fed wire, uh, 2022, 2023, Great Britain, 2022, 2023, the EU, 2021, globally, the SWIFT MT, MX, November 2021 to 2025. So the beginning of next decade is really going to start seeing uh, a lot of this change, a lot of this shift. And I think that the Federal Reserve just wants to be, or rather has to start to become part of this system. Uh, I don't think they have a choice at this point. So boy, how far have we come within the last several years? This was done about two and a half years ago. I talked a little bit about Fed now back then. That was uh, when it was being introduced, of course. Since then, we've heard a lot more information. The fact that they are integrating with Valente, which is indeed Ripple enabled. So that puts that speculation to rest. We're also seeing this ISO 20022 integration timeline. And even at that point, you know, they were eyeing 2023, 2024 for ISO 20022 integration. Let's fast forward to May 2020. You guys remember what happened then? If you don't remember, well, here it is. From Michael on Twitter, at Val5Links, Ripple claims to be the first DLT-focused member of the global ISO 20022 standard body, driving international standards for interoperability between financial institutions. They're the first. The first DLT-focused member. So Ripple has now officially become a member of the ISO 20022 standards body, which is driving a new data standards for payments and data messaging between global financial institutions. The company claims to be the first distributed ledger technology focused member of the group, which includes a number of international commercial and central banks, along with payment processing entities like Swift and Visa. So Ripple officially playing with the big guys. And so ISO 20022, uh, this is a single standardized approach in the methodology processing and repository to enable communications and interoperability between all global financial organizations. If you want to be taken seriously in the world of finance, you need to be part of this. And so we heard a little bit of news about this about a month ago or two months ago. Uh, the standard has already been adopted in 70 countries and it is estimated that by 2023, 87% of global financial transactions will be supported by ISO 20022. And they're saying that uh, everybody will be on the standard by the year 2025, and that date has been pushed back due to partially because of the beer flu, but uh, other factors involved as well. So is Ripple the crypto's Jekyll and Hyde? Ripple's membership of the standards body marks a further validation of cryptocurrency and DLT in the world of traditional finance. It also allows Ripple and its customers to have a say in the future direction of cross-border payments. Adherence to the ISO 20022 standard also simplifies counterparty connections and reduces associated costs. So as we're fast forwarding to May of 2020, right? This is coming uh, about a year, just a little over a year after I did this original video, introducing the FedNow project. Ripple has become the first distributed ledger technology company to be ISO 20022 compliant. Everybody in the XRP community at that time was like, wow, this is going to be great. Of course, XRP, you know, if it's ISO 20022 compliant, this means that it's going to moon if it's going to be the one that is utilized in the financial system. And then fast forward roughly another year. So this was from April of 2021. When I discovered even more, some may say more lucrative information about ISO 20022 and the connection to the Great Reset. Listen to this. But what I really wanted to get to was this. Now, I saw this from Robert Miller here on Twitter. The World Bank reveals the date when the pandemic will end. So I know some of you guys are skeptical of what is going on in the world today. I mean, I don't want to dwell on this too much. I wanted to address this PDF, though, because it almost sounds like, and I mean, I know there are going to be people who definitely believe this and other people who are going to think this is definite hogwash, but it almost sounds like this Great Reset was possibly pre-planned. I mean, we know narratives in the media and we know how that works. We know that some things are timed conveniently or not so conveniently, depending on how it's going to affect markets, for example. We've heard about positive Bitcoin narratives uh, coming out when the price is near its all-time high. This happens in financial markets all the time. So why couldn't it happen on a global scale surrounding the number one issue that's on everybody's minds worldwide with regards to the beer flu. Not only that guys, look at what the World Bank put out. Uh, this was put out last year, but it just got my attention now. And if you guys have already seen this, I do apologize. Uh, the World Bank reveals the date. So what is the date that they are talking about? 
Um, he says it's on page one here, so let me go through all this stuff. And when we get to page one, we see this, the data sheet, basic information, countries, the world, project name, beer, flu, strategic preparedness, and response program. There are some other items down here like a project ID, financing instrument, investment project financing, uh, environmental and social risk classification is substantial. So financial and implementation modalities, multi-phasing problematic approach, which is the MPA. Uh, they want to talk about contingency emergency response component, fragile state, small states, and responding to natural or man-made disasters. So guys, again, this was from April 2020, quote unquote, before there were any kind of remedies uh, for the beer flu. But take a look down here. Expected project approval date was back in uh, early April 2020. Expected project closing date, not till March 2025. Are they suggesting an end date for the pandemic? And will we be ushering in a new financial system at this point in time? Now, I know I've heard the year 2025 uh, being uttered by people in the XRP community with regards to that mass utility. And if my brain serves me correctly, yeah. You guys remember this? This is the timeline for the implementation of the ISO 20022 standard. They were projecting that we were going to start this in 2019. Uh, we were going to see go live dates by 2021. And guys, take a look at the end date for implementation to phase all of this in. Coincidentally or not so coincidentally, the year 2025. Now, I don't know. This could be a coincidence, of course. All I'm saying is that this is information put out by Deutsche Bank, an official PDF, basically stating the ISO 20022 implementation was supposed to be finalized, fully implemented by 2025. And sure enough, we got the World Bank also suggesting that March 2025 is the projected end date of all things going wrong in the world. And they were projecting this as early as April of 2020. So I'm going to leave that there. And if you guys are interested in watching this full video, um, because I don't want to get into the weeds with this, there's a lot to unpack there. I will link this video in the top right hand corner if you guys want to watch the full thing. But the ISO 20022 standard, was it always planned to coincide with the WEF agenda? And I mean, you know, going back to that second video I showed you guys from May of 2020, why was Ripple so quick to implement it? And I think it's pretty obvious they were the first crypto company to implement it. So what does that tell you? And so here we are today in 2022. And uh, here were just some tweets from Payment Infrastructure News. Now, Payment Infrastructure News, for those of you guys who do not know, they uh, give us news on ISO 20022 migration projects, requests to pay, and other topics related to the payments infrastructure landscape. Of course, uh, ISO 20022, one of the big ones. Uh, they posted this uh, fairly recently, just earlier this month. Denmark approves the role of P27. Now, we know there is a connection with P27 in Ripple. As a new rational clearinghouse, the cross-border payments platform Nordic Payments being developed by a group of Nordic banks uh, is to become the new national clearinghouse of Denmark. Bondcrypt XRP also posted this uh, late last year, actually on Christmas Day. Everything is coming together, folks. As I've always said, the year 2022, ISO 20022, is the year for full adoption. And so he's also mentioning 2025. Interesting times coming ahead. Retweeting out another tweet here by Payment Infrastructure News. Interesting insights into ISO 20022, uh, Swift GPI, the alternative providers. So uh, there's a lot of information to unpack here. Uh, too much to cover in one video. Those days should be over once ISO 20022 becomes a global standard for payments. Another one from Bondcrypt XRP. Because a new era, guys, is beginning and i think that this is what they are preparing us for i think this idea of lockdowns i know in some places around the world uh everything's open and so they're not affected by beer flu lockdowns but there are a lot of geographic locations around the world like in western europe canada australia new zealand uh austria has been uh, very very strict with lockdowns essentially the theory goes as such the powers that be want to destroy the system tearing it down before building it back up. And, uh, you know, just uh, to point out that year again, 2025, I think that that is their timeline. And I think that is why they want to target uh, full ISO 20022 compliance by that point in time. And why I definitely think uh, real world utility, although XRP is following the spec market at this point in time, we are likely to see even more value added over the next three years. Uh, this one also, guys, two cryptocurrencies are not just compliant with ISO 20022. They are members of the ISO 20022 standards body. These currencies are Ripple or XRP 
and Stellar Lumens or XLM. This posted by 432 Hertz XRP here on Twitter. And this is just another article saying, you know, five compliant cryptos to keep an eye on in 2022, just outlining uh, the five in this report. Uh, one of them being XRP, Stellar Lumens, as I'd mentioned, XDC, IOTA, Algorand, Quant, HBAR, and ADA. Some of these are not officially listed yet, but these coins are certainly coins to be paying attention to. Let's uh, let's not forget XRP. Okay, I'm going to name these again: XRP, XLM, Algo, A L G O, A D A. Okay, those are four of the uh, of the six or of the five I think over here that they've listed that I want you guys to remember. Okay. There was also this Bankers Association paper. They've confirmed to the Federal Reserve on Monday that it supports a plan to migrate to ISO 20022. I reported on this earlier this month. Uh, and they said specifically that uh, by November of 2023, in November of 2023, they are going to do this over one single day, no earlier than November 2023, instead of a phased in approach, which was uh, originally considered in 2018. I don't know if you guys remember that. So there's all this talk of ISO 20022. We know the implementation is happening, even if it's not happening today, XRP community members are getting very, very excited. But then Matt Hamilton here brings down the hammer. ISO 20022, there is a lot of confusion about this standard for financial industry messaging in the cryptocurrency space. A lot of people refer to ISO 20022 compliant cryptocurrencies. This is a non sequitur. ISO 20022 does not define cryptocurrencies. It is related to messages. So then the question was, and he tweeted this back on January 8th, but I wanted to address it in this video considering we're talking about ISO 20022. Will it have an effect on XRP then? Is this going to actually make uh, cryptocurrencies like XRP, Algorand, XLM, ADA, is it going to help with the value of these types of cryptocurrencies? Are we going to see prices rise? So here's Matt Hamilton's example. In fact, ISO 20022 doesn't even define messages. It defines a set of processes and standards for defining messages. So for example, it doesn't say a payment message must have an amount field defined like this. It says a message must articulate the fields it wants like this. So if you have ISO 20022 compliant messages in that the way they have been defined and articulated is compliant, but not what the message itself actually defines, this is actually common in ISO standards, i.e. Uh, ISO 27001 is often said to be a standard for information security, but it actually is a standard for information security management systems. So these are the semantics here that I think Matt Hamilton wants to um, wants the XRP community to understand because cryptocurrencies by definition technically are not ISO 20022 compliant, but it's more about the messaging. It's more about the data processes or the um, technical computer language, I suppose, that gets that information across. He says, for example, it is perfectly valid in ISO 27001 to state that you write your password in 10 high letters on the outside of your building, so long as you define how you came to that, what the risks are, how you manage it, etc. ISO 20022 has a catalog of message definitions defined in accordance with the standard. And so financial software such as RippleNet is written with these message types in mind such that they can interoperate with each other. For example, there is an ISO 20022 compliant message called payment initiation message or pain, which defines the format of a message for communicating a payment between two systems. With payment systems like SIPA, ACH, RippleNet, etc., all currently using or adopting ISO 20022 compliant messages means they can more easily communicate with each other. So let's focus on that for a second. Remember that, oh, this is pain 001 and it gives a, just gives an example. I know how to decode that. How does this relate to crypto? Having all the financial systems globally talking the same language then means that they can more easily exchange data with one another. The next step is to have more global currencies, which is where cryptocurrencies come in. So to recap, there is no such thing as an ISO 20022 compliant crypto, but there are financial systems, some created by crypto companies like Ripple, that do use ISO 20022 compliant messages to communicate, some of which use cryptocurrencies like XRP to convey value. So some of the most important things I think we should take away from this. More efficient, right? Going back to the top of the video. More efficient, more flexible, more resilient, more innovative, straightforward processing. These are all things that we have to remember when RippleNet, a company that exclusively utilizes XRP, signs on to ISO 20022. So if these financial systems can now talk the same language 
As Matt Hamilton mentions, well, they by definition obviously can process more transfers more quickly, more efficiently. And so what does this mean? Even if technically XRP is not a ISO 20022 compliant coin, it does mean though, that the body that utilizes XRP exclusively, namely Ripple, through RippleNet, is going to be able to communicate, process these financial transfers across the globe with other ISO 20022 compliant entities, which means more utilization, guys, for XRP. They will be quicker transfers because everybody will be using the same language, even if it is just messages to communicate. We know these transactions occur. They want them to be more streamlined. So in essence, more utility for XRP means more demand for XRP. And even if technically the coin is not ISO 20022 compliant, more demand for XRP ultimately means the price will rise. One other thing I just wanted to mention, just going back to this document here, remember those cryptocurrencies that I mentioned, XRP, XLM, ALGO, ADA, going back to the World Economic Forum's cryptocurrencies, a guide to getting started, Back from June 2021, scrolling down in this document, you guys can see some of the cryptocurrencies that they have listed in their documents specifically. XRP, Stellar's XLM, Algorand's up here, and Cardano, four of the six cryptocurrencies where the companies like the Algorand Foundation or Stellar Lumens or what have you, they are going to be using their own coins similar to how Ripple is utilizing XRP. So another connection here that I just wanted to bring to your attention, ISO 20022 compliance, a very critical part of the Great Reset and the World Economic Forum's agenda. They wanna tear the system down, guys, before they build it back up. And I think anyone holding any of these coins are gonna come out of this over the next 10 years, if not millionaires, multimillionaires, perhaps some of you guys, even billionaires. But that's just my opinion. I wanna hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.